Hi everyone, today it's time for another deep dive, and this deep dive is going to be about Fundrise. Fundrise is a non-publicly traded REIT, and their goal is to bring low-cost real estate investing to the public. So this video is going to cover what Fundrise is specifically, why I have chosen to invest with them, some of their various different investment plans. I will compare Fundrise to the Vanguard Real Estate Fund, and then I will go through my portfolio which investment plan I have chosen, and what my returns have been like. If you decide to invest in Fundrise, I do have an affiliate link in the description. I don't get any money or anything from that, but what they will do is they will waive your advisory fees for 90 days, and I will receive the same. As always, there will be some jelly at the end, which is something I enjoyed outside of the markets. If you're interested in buying this gold-plated Bugatti Veyron, Current MSRP on this is about $10 million. You should definitely like and subscribe if you're interested. And if you're not interested, like and subscribe anyway. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So Fundrise is a private REIT. They take your money and they invest in real estate on your behalf. But it's not publicly traded the same way that the Vanguard Real Estate Fund is or even Realty Income Corp, which is another REIT that is publicly traded that I also own. This one has a much longer time horizon, so once you invest this money with them, there's a couple of steps that you have to go through to get it out, and I will cover that later in the video. Full disclosure, I am a shareholder of Fundrise. They offered an internal IPO to investors, and I did purchase some shares with them, so I do own part of Fundrise as well as invest with Fundrise. So next is, why should we invest with Fundrise? This graphic is displaying how traditionally most people would invest about 70% of their investments in stocks and 30% in bonds. But in the new modern portfolio, about 30% of your assets should be invested in real estate. And Fundrise is a platform that allows you to get into private real estate without having to buy like a home and rent it out or anything like that. Here's a little bit of their marketing. They say you get access to investments that were previously unavailable to private investors. Better returns than expected. They have a team of real estate professionals, and they also diversify through multiple different real estate investments. Here they are comparing publicly traded REITs to the private market. They say that over the past 20 years, publicly traded REITs have returned about 8.2% whereas the private market has returned 12.3%, and this platform is giving you access to that private market. The difference here is with publicly traded REITs, you can get in and out of them at any time, whereas with the private market, you should expect a three to seven year planning horizon. Overall, it's costing you about 33% of your returns to be able to sell your position at any time, whereas if you lock in your position for three to seven years, you get a much better return. Another reason to invest with Fundrise is their returns. It's pretty hard to argue with this graph right here. It shows their cumulative returns. They were founded in 2014 with zero returns here. And then over time, they've returned over $120 million to investors. You can see what their annualized returns have been right here. Moving on to their investment plans, you can see here they have a supplemental plan, a balanced plan, and a long-term growth plan. The difference here is the supplemental income is going to have a higher emphasis on dividends. Balanced will be balanced between dividends and appreciation. And then long term is less focused on dividends and more focused on appreciation. Of course, they say the longer term is going to have the highest total return. So it's all up to you if you want more income right now or if you want longer term growth. For me, this is a long term portfolio, so I am in the long term growth plan. And then they do a quick calculation here for you. So if you have a 20-year planning horizon and you put it in the supplemental income, they expect you to get returns of about 79 to 8.6%. Your dividend is going to be right around 1%, and then appreciation is going to be the remainder. And if you were to invest $10,000 with them over the next 20 years, it would grow to $48,685. Moving on to the balanced portfolio, your dividends are going to be 
less, 0.4 to 0.5%. However, your appreciation will be much higher, so your expected return will be 8.6 to 10.7%. And then $10,000 is expected to grow to $63,273. Moving on to long-term growth. Your long-term growth dividends are expected to be very low because, because you're going to be generating most of your returns from appreciation. So your total return is going to be 9.3 to 12.8%. So $10,000 is going to turn into $81,863 in 20 years with this calculation. To quickly go over the minimum requirements, they do have a $500 minimum requirement for opening an account with them. And that gets you into the starter level. At the starter level, they're going to take your money and invest it how they see fit. You don't choose between the accounts that I just mentioned. Once you get to $1,000, that's the core level. Then you can choose your fund between the three that I just covered. And then I should mention, they do have an advanced level. Once you reach $10,000 in investments with them, they do open what's called the plus plan. And they open these additional funds to the investors, and this is actually the plan that I'm currently in. So next is Vanguard versus Fundrise, which is the better investment option. They clearly consider Vanguard to be their number one competitor, which makes sense. Vanguard does have the most assets under management of any investment firm. So Vanguard has its own real estate investment trust, and that's who they're competing with. So they do a direct comparison here to why you should choose Fundrise over Vanguard. So first they show how the Vanguard ETF works. They have properties that are managed by private market operators, which fall under the real estate investment trust, which falls under the Vanguard fund, and then is owned by the investor. So the main purpose of this diagram is to show you how many layers there are between you, the investor, and the property itself. Scrolling down here, it shows that some of these ETFs owned by the Vanguard ETF is Simon Property, Equinix, and Avalon Bay Communities. So these are the actual REITs within the Vanguard Fund. You could go out and purchase these different REITs without having to own the real estate ETF, which is another option which allows you to reduce the layers between you and the actual investment. And remember, every one of these layers is representative of fees and profits for those specific groups. So then they go on to describe these fees. So it says here that the Vanguard fund charges 3% advisory fees and people look at that and see, oh, 0.3% is lower than the 1% standard here. And that means that this real estate fund is cheap. But if you really dig into it, you understand that the real estate ETFs owned by the Vanguard fund are taking at least that much themselves. So those funds are using that 1% underneath to manage their own REITs, and then the Vanguard fund is charging 0.3% on top of that. So you're looking at the advisory fees and thinking those are the only fees and commissions that you're really paying, but those underlying REITs are charging their own fees, which are not getting passed on to you because of the different layers displayed in the diagram. It goes on to say here, at the most basic level, REIT-level management fees can take approximately 0.5% annually nominally reported but this fee often does not include property level costs and fees reimbursements or buried in the property operations including financing fees development and construction management or lease administration for instance project sponsorship and marketing might be managed by an outside company owned by the REIT fees charged for these services would be separate from the REIT's management fees. A further example of what this could potentially look like, they show Simon Properties, which was one of the real estate investment trusts included in the Vanguard Fund. In 2016, expenses of Simon Property Group equaled 50% of the gross revenue. REIT managers also received stock options as part of their compensation. So if that REIT is expensing 50% of its gross revenue, then those are essentially your management fees. You're losing a huge amount of the revenue to management fees. Then you have the fundrise approach. So then you have the properties, the e-funds, and then you, the investor. So fundrise is cutting out all of those middlemen 
by acting as the middleman, which gives you access directly to the properties. You invest directly in those properties. Fundrise takes a small percentage overall, and that gives you direct access to these e-REITs, which increases your returns pretty dramatically. They do a quick comparison of what a traditional investment would charge you in fees versus Fundrise. I'm not going to read through every single piece here, but basically Fundrise is charging a 1% fee versus a 1.37% fee up to a 6.45% fee, depending on your type of investment. So let's give all this talk about fees a little bit of context. This situation is a person who has $25,000 in a retirement account. They add $10,000 every year and they receive a 7% return every year, and they plan to retire in 40 years. This diagram shows if you were to pay a 1.02% investor fee versus a 0.07 fee, how would that affect your portfolio over the course of 40 years? So at 10 years, you would have paid $11,343. At 20 years, you're talking about $61,696. And if we jump down here, to at the end of 40 years, it would have cost you $592,798. So long story short, fees are bad and Fundrise gives you the opportunity to invest in real estate for a much lower cost. All right, let's get into my portfolio. So this is what it looks like after you log in. You can see here they have returns, all time versus year to date, dividends versus appreciation. They tell you exactly how much they're charging you in fees. You can set a goal here. It tells you how much they think you need to invest in order to reach a certain dollar amount by a certain year. And then if you click here on historical, it'll tell you your account history. So I started with $3,000. And then I decided that I wanted to get into the advanced category, which is $10,000. And then I've been consistently investing over time. I made a decision here in November that I wanted real estate to be a much larger portion of my portfolio. And then I've been consistently investing over time. If you scroll down here, it will show you your portfolio based on the different types of projects. And here they show each individual project and what their expected return is. So expected return is here on the left. And then they have a rating system. I'm not really sure exactly what that means. But it shows you have 167 active projects, your debt to equity ratio, each of these individual projects. So let's just go ahead and click on one and it'll tell you this is an equity investment. This is how much Fundrise invested in this property and this is their expected annual return. Then you can click on view details and it will tell you exactly why they chose this investment. So it's in Landover, Maryland. It says what type it is, how much they invested, what their expected return is, a little bit over 10%. And then it tells you their market analysis. So Washington DC and its suburbs in Maryland and Northern Virginia form a fast growing dynamic market that is uniquely insulated from national economic downturns by the federal government. And then it gives you the timeline. They acquired the project in December of 2019. And then they give consistent updates on when they start doing things. Going back to the main homepage, if you scroll down here, it'll show you all the recent activities with current projects. They also send investor updates here. Then if you click here, you can see the Fundrise IPO that I mentioned before. And this is just an opportunity for investors in Fundrise to own part of the company also. Although you can't just go in here and purchase shares at any time. They have very specific windows when they're releasing more shares to raise capital. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for. What have my returns been like? In 2019, I received 3.8% overall. 2020, I've received 6% overall, which is really great considering that the stock market is down about 15% right now. In terms of dollars, this is what it looks like. I started 2019 with $0. You can see here, I started investing in May of 2019, and I didn't really build up a decent sized portfolio until the end of May. And despite that, I still received $548. And then year to date, I received $109 this year. So my total return is $656. Again, remember that I am on the long-term growth plan and I'm pretty early into this portfolio. 
I really just hit a year this month. So my planning horizon is about 20 years from now. So I'm not really too concerned about my early on returns. However, 4.2% over the last year is pretty good considering the current market conditions. I quickly wanted to go over the different positions within my portfolio. So they do break it down into each of the different REITs and they're mostly organized by area. And you can see how much money is in each position. Also another thing illustrated here is the IPO. So if I click here, it'll tell you how much money I put into that IPO. So when you see that 4.2% return, it's actually on this number. The, the shares within the IPO are obviously not going to receive interest the same way that the funds will. This IPO, I decided to purchase shares in Fundrise because I really liked the idea of the company. And then if Fundrise ever decides to go public as a company and not with their REITs, then these shares will potentially be worth significantly more. At least that's my hope. One more quick thing. Because of the long-term horizon of Fundrise, the question is, are there any costs associated with redeeming shares? That means withdrawing money. So if you scroll down here, they do have penalties. So if you want to withdraw your money before five years, you will pay some penalties. From 90 days to three years, you will pay a 3% penalty on the value of your shares. So before 90 days, if you change your mind, you can always withdraw your money at no cost. From three to four years, it'll be a 2% fee. From four to five years, it'll be a 1% fee. And then five plus years, you can redeem 100% of your value for no cost. Now they do still have payment windows. So you request your funds because this is a business. So they are using your money in investments and they have to move money around if investors choose to withdraw their money. So you'd put in a request, they will tell you when you can withdraw your money. And I assume at that time, they would also tell you your fees if you have any. I haven't withdrawn any money from them, so I haven't experienced this, but it is stated here that there are certain penalties for certain time periods of withdrawal. All right, to summarize, Fundrise is a private real estate investment trust. The reasons that I have chosen to invest with Fundrise is because it allows you to avoid a lot of the fees associated with REITs. Also, it's more of a direct to investor method for investing in real estate. They have three different plans, one focused on dividends, one balanced between dividends and equity growth, and one focused on equity growth. I have chosen Fundrise over Vanguard because of the reduced fees as well as the higher returns. The one downside for using Fundrise over Vanguard is it is completely illiquid for the first five years if you don't want to pay any kind of fees, whereas Vanguard, you can sell out of those REITs. And then my portfolio is the long-term growth plus portfolio. And my returns over the last year have been 4.2%. Again, I consider this to be fine since the market has gone down pretty heavily. Of course, this is all my opinion and this is my experience. Consult your financial advisor before choosing to invest with them and your results may vary. And with that, let's get to the jelly. So today's jelly is coming at you from Buff Cornell. His channel is called Buff Cornell. And this guy does some pretty low quality covers of popular songs. And this one happened to come across my news feed and I couldn't help myself but put it on the jelly. So let's take a look. Yo, yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy Buff Crow, baby, back from up at that level. Now I do not get down. It's your boy Buff Crow back once again. How's everybody doing today on this mayonnaise on the slushy? Huh? There ain't nothing wrong with some mayonnaise on the slushy. You ain't never tried to vote mayonnaise on the slushy? <laughs> So I just want to say thank you to uh, Buff Cornell for that outstanding rendition of Fireflies. I will link that video in the description if you want to enjoy the fullness of his cover. It is, it's special. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments or you can shoot me an email at theportfoliobulletin at gmail.com. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you made it this far. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.